Welcome to Rick Rack Ruby. I'm Laura Cluvo. Today we will be making this patchwork angel ornament made from honey bun strips. She's fun and easy, so let's get started. So this is a little roll of honey bun strips. These are an inch and a half wide and I believe 45 inches long. So I'm not sure what I'm going to do with these, but I just wanted to show you how it looked. This is the Christmas stitched collection from Moda. It has um, neutrals and then sort of a lime green and reds and off whites. I really like this collection. It offers a lot and uh, I'm going to open it up and see what I have. Let's start with the pattern. This is a piece of graph paper that is two and a half inches wide and five inches long. I can fold it in half. I'm going to take a two and a half inch circle template, sort of line up the registration marks and draw a half circle at the bottom. Then I'll fold this in half and then I count over three squares and sort of connect from here to here and cut it out. And then my shape looks something like this. It doesn't have to be perfect. Then I traced it onto an index card just so that I would have a little bit sturdier pattern. And I cut the shape from 50 weight Pellon, non fusible, just regular interfacing. So this is going to be the foundation for the angel. My honey bun strips, they're really fun. <laughs> And I'm going to line them up and stitch them just right on top of each other like little stairs. And I'm going to start with the green on the bottom. And then, oh, I don't want to do this upside down. I did get one upside down. And then the red. And of course, you can, um, you can line yours up however you like. This is a pine cone print and the pine cones hang down this way. And then this print is fun. There happens to be one of these little floral parts of the print lined up right there. And I'm gonna to try to center it here. And then I'm gonna put this one at the top. The one at the top you barely notice. So I'm gonna start at the bottom and going to make sure that I have the edge of the strip right at the bottom. Sometimes I'll fold it in half and I'll use this sort of as a guideline to make sure that my strips are um, perpendicular to the foundation. Wait, does that make sense? Yeah, so the center and the strips, there's a 90 degree angle there. I have a habit of kind of letting them tilt sometimes. So I'm gonna put that right to the bottom, the very, very bottom, and then just trim this off. I tend to be generous. And that will be the first strip. I'm just going to pin that for a second. Then the second strip is gonna go right on top of it before I even sew my first seam, I'm going to place these uh, right sides together. I'm making sure that the holly mo motif sort of grows up. <laughs> and um, I'm gonna put that right on the top. Need some better scissors this time. And then I'll pin and stitch these two strips to the foundation with a quarter inch seam allowance. There are five strips, one and a half inches wide each, and the pattern is five inches tall. So um, if I did the math right, I should be able to flip each one of these and um, with a quarter inch seam allowance, and they should just about cover that entire foundation. 
Here we go. I'm using white thread and I will go over and press this. And then I'll add the red and then the flower and then the green gingham at the top. For this strip, I'm going to try to line up this floral motif right in the center. That looks pretty good. So I will stitch and flip that one and then the green gingham at the top. I've stitched all of my strips and here's how it is on the back. So I will stitch very close to the edge here on the back and then I will cut off all that extra. Now I'm going to add some decorative stitches along these seams. I did a double zigzag for the bottom and the top and this is a little blanket stitch and a feather stitch. I've chosen this fabric for my backing. This is just a fat quarter of um, one of the fabrics from this collection. I'm not really going to, you know, cut out the actual shape of the ornament. I'm just going to kind of rough cut around it. I'm going to switch my thread to red on my machine and just stitch around this outside with a quarter inch seam allowance and leaving the top open. I did a lot of back stitching at the start and at the end because sometimes these um, can come loose if uh, when you're stuffing. So I always make sure I do a back and forth a couple times there at the start. And now I'm just gonna cut this out and I'm gonna cut probably an eighth of an inch from my um, stitching line. I'm not notching or pinking. I'm just cutting pretty close. There we go. And now I'll turn it right side out and stuff it. It's not too hard to turn. The opening is, you know, just the right size, I would say. I have a chopstick. It's going to help me turn this all the way. That seam is nice and smooth. And I just want to confirm that this little floral design in the print is pretty well centered. I want to make sure that I um, stuff the neck very firmly so that it will support the head. So I think that's probably enough. That looks good, nice and round, firm. And now I'm gonna gather up the top with a doubled strand of quilting thread. I'm just going to go in and out, in and out, about a quarter of an inch down. And um, I'm trying not to catch any of the stuffing in my stitches. Just in and out, all the way around. I secured my thread in the seam allowance to begin. And then I'm back around and as I'm drawing this tight, I'm going to tuck in this seam allowance. So that, you know, it's nice and finished on the top. That looks good. And now to secure, I'm gonna go through a few more times. Just pulling it nice and tight. Then I'll send my needle through to the back and do a French knot, wrap two or three times, reinsert the needle, and just pop it through. For the face, I'm using a one inch ball knob. I've already, I've already created the face and uh, you can find the instructions for the face in my Focus on Faces video. They're really easy. I'm going to apply some hot glue here to the flat side of the bead and then I'm going to press it onto the top. I don't want too much glue. I don't want it to ooze out, but I want enough so that it's really secure. This is the only thing that's holding the head to the body. And so if you don't have it glued securely, the whole thing could potentially come off. I'm going to hold it for a second just to make sure that the glue hardens. I'm using hot glue. That looks good. Now I have a little piece of scallop lace. It's about two and a half inches long and a quarter of an inch wide. And I'm just going to glue it 
I'm gonna make sure I have the right side here. I'm just going to glue it around the chin here, around her neck, just like a collar. I feel like that helps to um, sort of conceal some of this in between the head and the body and also just adds a little decorative element there, but not a lot, just a touch. I just added a couple of smudges of hot glue to the wrong side of the lace. I'm centering this little motif in the front and wrapping the ends around to the back. Then I'll, I'll add a little more glue and overlap them. The ends won't show because they'll be covered by the wings. Let's do the hair. I'm going to use this index card method. It's a four by six inch card. I'm folding it in half, matching the short ends, and then I'm going to turn it this way. Today I'm going to use auburn yarn. We're going to have a little red-headed angel, and I'm going to use two different types. One is a loopy mohair, and one is sort of a fuzzy mohair. So I'm going to wrap this around this folded card. It takes about eight times to get across, but you know, depending on your yarn, your yarn could be thicker or thinner. Just, you know, loosely cover the card the first time. Now I have, um, I'll show you. I'm keeping my index finger on the back here, which helps. I tend to wrap too tightly and then the card bends like that. And so if I keep my finger like that and actually wrap around the index finger in the back, it helps me. Okay, I'm not too good at counting, <laughs> but I've just about gotten across the card, so now I'll go back in the other direction and go back to where I started. My machine is threaded with, <laughs> it's really brown thread, it's the closest color that I had, but um, I wanted to I mean, aim for matching thread, whatever you have. And then I'm going to sew up and down the center of the card right here three times. So down, up, down. Um, the only reason that I stitch back and forth three times is because I want to be sure that the card is perforated. It makes it, you know, well perforated. It makes it easier to remove the index card from inside there. one side at a time, I'm just pulling these out. Kind of hold this in the other hand. That came off perfectly well, very cleanly. There's no little bits left in there. So this is going to be her wig, and I'm gonna glue it around her head like that, and then we're gonna flip it up, and it's gonna turn out really cute. So I'll apply some hot glue, starting here, and then across to the other side just kind of like a headband, like that. Now I'm going to press the wig into that glue. Um, I have a little, I didn't start right on the end here. I left a little extra because these two bits are going to connect in the back. But first I want to make sure that I have this, um, you know, close enough to the face and kind of even left and right so that I can see her face. That's That looks good. That looks good. So then I'm gonna add some more glue back here and I'm just gonna put the ends into the back like that. There's the glue and then there's the ends meeting in the back. It doesn't have to be perfect. You'll be surprised. It's easy, it's fun, and it doesn't have to be perfect. It's a Christmas miracle. I have brown quilting thread, but any sort of strong thread that matches the color of your hair will work. So I'm wrapping this around twice, and then I'm gonna sort of tie it and pull it tightly to make this little top knot. That looks good. 
and then maybe I'll tie it in the back. Just make sure it's nice and secure. And back around to the front. Then I'm going to use the needle and I'm going to stitch through beneath beneath the part that's tied beneath the um, the top knot there and then tie one more time. I want that to be tied very tightly. That's what gives her a lot of personality is that poof on the top, right? And then for a hanging loop, I'm going to use this um, baker's twine. This is kind of the thick baker's twine and I've put it on a nice heavy needle and I'm just stitching it through below the top knot and I'm going to tie it off above the angel. And then for the halo, I'm going to pull out a piece of 20 gauge gold wire, about seven inches or so, and then shape it into a circle overlapping the ends like this. And then I'll twist the ends together for about an inch, maybe a little less than an inch. Shape this into a circle and bend the stem up or down. <laughs> and then I'll add some glue here to the end and I will press that into the top knot. I want that to be nice and secure. Then I have a little decoration for her hairstyle right here, just a little off center. This is a paper flower from Hobby Lobby. Looks like this. Poppies and papery from the paper studio at Hobby Lobby. It's in with all the um, papers and embellishments for our scrapbooking. And then for her wings. We have a couple of options. I have white and red. Here's white and here's red. Which one do you like? Now I also have this one, which I made with red um, embroidery stitches and a little bit different combination of fabrics. And then here's, uh, <laughs> these are kind of duds. I just didn't like the way that green was so strong in the center and I also didn't really like using the words. I think the, the white with the polka dots might be just a little busy, even for me. So I'm gonna use the red. I added a circle of hot glue to the top of the wings. And then I'm gonna press that into the back of the head like this and sort of hold that until it hardens or cools. There we go. And then finally, for a little embellishment in the front, I have the thinner Baker's twine. And I don't know if I exactly have to stitch through the fabric. I think I'm just gonna stitch through that little, not even stitch, I'm really like just looping it through that lace motif right there, and I'll just tie it into a bow. That looks good. I'll tie the streamer ends into overhand knots. And then an option is to add a little um, glitter holly sticker. I like it, but you know, I tend to over embellish everything. <laughs> so I'm gonna go ahead and add it, but you that's always optional. Should I put the berry at the top, do you think? Yeah. That looks good. And then I started this one, so I think I'm gonna finish this one also. 
So this one, I made the loops a little bit longer. I didn't like the way these seemed to end right at that seam. So I just made these a little bit longer. And I think everything else is the same, right? Anyway, these are done. Thank you for watching my tutorial. If you're enjoying my videos, please like, share, and subscribe.